Hi friends, my name is Tally. Welcome to my channel. I post books and things. Today I'm going to be talking about the books that I'll be reading for the month of April. I haven't done one of these videos in a long time just because I haven't been planning the books that I want to read each month but finally for April I decided to do it again because I just feel like I've been in such a big reading slump that I don't like know what to read next and I feel like when I plan my TBR I feel a little bit more like um, set for the month and know exactly what I'm going to be reading. I've been watching a lot of TBR videos from a lot of bookstagrammers and I have really missed them. But there are four, five books that I'm going to be reading for April and the one that I'm currently reading right now is The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas and this is a um, book about the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence. Um, it is about a young woman who learned that her wealthy new husband and his remote estate will save her. But something sinister is lurking in this hacienda. So it is kind of like um, Mexican Gothic. I'm really excited to read this one. I am on page 38. I haven't done a lot of progress, but hopefully I can do some today. So this is one of them. I'm also going to be reading Our Missing Hearts. This follows a 12-year-old bird gardener who lives in a quiet existence with his loving father who is a former linguist who now shelves books in a university library. His mother, Margaret, a Chinese-American poet, was left without a trace when he was nine years old. He doesn't know what happened to her, only that her books have been banned, and he resents that she cared more about her work than him. Then one day, Bird receives a mysterious letter containing only a cryptic drawing, and soon he is believed into a quest to find her. His journey will take him back to the many folk tales she poured into his head as a child through the ranks of an underground network of hero heroic librarians and finally to New York City where he will learn the truth about what happened to his mother and what the future holds for them both. So again, this synopsis, amazing. I just feel very interested in reading it. Another story about like parents and like lessons and legacies that are passed on to your children and I am so excited to read it. Another book that I'll be reading and I know I said a long time ago that I was never going to read this book, but I'm going to be reading Normal People by Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney is an amazing author. I think that she deserves a little bit more hype. After reading Conversations with Friends, I love that story. And I loved another book that I read by her, but I forgot which one. But I'm going to be reading Normal People. I was not a fan of the show, and I think after like thinking about it and like sitting down and really thinking about why I didn't like it, it was because of the relationship. And then going back, I'm like, that's what the relationship was supposed to be like, you know, it was very um, toxic and that's how many relationships are. Not relationships are perfect. You're not going to find like perfect relationships in all stories and that's what the author intended to do in this book. And I kind of relate to the story from one of my past relationships so maybe that's why I hated it so much in the beginning. Connell and Marianne grew up in a small town but the, sim but the similarities end there. At school Connell is popular and well liked while Marianne is a loner but when, to when the two strike up a conversation awkward but electrifying something life-changing happens. Normal People is a story of a mutual fascination, friendship, and love. It takes us from that first conversation to the years beyond in the company of the two people who try to stay apart but find that they can't. I'll be reading this one. Wish me luck. Another book I'm going to be reading is French Braid by Anne Taylor. I don't know why I'm picking this up. I just feel like it's a very springy vibe, you know, French braids. It is about tremendous warmth, tremendous warmth that illuminates the kindness and cruelties of our daily lives, the possibility of breaking free from those who love us, and how close yet how unknowable every family is to itself. This book that I'm going to be reading is Yerba Buena, finally. I've been wanting to read this and I've heard that it's not really enjoyable, but I'm going to give it a try just because it reminds me of spring and it's all like spring vibes up in here. You know? Sarah Foster runs away from home at 16. She leaves behind the girl she once was, capable of trust and intimacy. Years later in Los Angeles, she is a sought after bartender renowned, renowned as much for her brilliant cocktails as for the mystery that clings to her. Across the city, Emily is in a holding pattern, yearning for the beauty and community her 
grandparents cultivated but unable to commit. On a whim, she takes a job arranging flowers at the glamorous restaurant Yerba Buena and falls into an affair with the married owner. The morning Emily and Sarah first meet, their connection is immediate, but the damage both women carry and the choices they have made pulls them apart and again and again. When Sarah's old life catches up to her, appending everything she thought she wanted just as Emily has finally gained her own sense of purpose, they must decide if their love is more powerful than their past. At once, it's exquisite and expansive, astonishing in its humanity and heart. Yerba Buena is a pur propulsive journey through the lives of the two women trying to find somewhere or someone to call home. I just can't wait to read it. Okay. So yeah, those are the five books that I want to read for the month of April. But uh, um, that's my TBR for the month of April. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please let me know on the comment section what books you plan in reading. I would really love to know the movie shows that I've been watching. I finished watching Lisa Frankenstein and that was a 10 out of 10. I really liked it. I think it reminds me so much of Edward Scissorhands and Cole Sprouse did such an amazing job being the creature. Um, it reminded me so much of Edward Scissorhands, the characteristics the characteristics and everything it was just so good i loved the main character i think she was so cool and i just feel like it's a great movie to watch during halloween and during spooky season so i really enjoyed it from the beginning to the end and i truly recommend it another movie that i watched on netflix is the tearsmith and let me tell you i did enjoy it but it was cringe at times um it, I feel like it was really fast paced. It jumped from one event to the other. So I, for, I, at times I was just like confused. I'm like, how the heck did they end up doing this? I don't know, at the end, it was just like, uh, whatever, it happened. It didn't leave me with like, it didn't leave me shocked. It didn't leave me surprised or anything. I feel like that movie is forgettable. And even though I did enjoy it and I enjoyed the whole um, topic and the whole um, message of the story, I just feel like I didn't really connect with any of the characters just because it was so fast paced. And yeah, but it was cute. If you're looking for a little fun, fast romance, The Tearsmith is for you. The books that I'm going to be reading for the month of April and the shows that I've been that I have watched. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Bye.